this is the beginning of our Watchman Week. And I believe that God is calling for every single one of us to answer the call of being a watchman. Come on, I, I, let me challenge you about something. Here in America, we have a certain mentality about the military. Okay, now we love the military, we love our military forces, but um, we have a big difference between a military mentality and a civilian mentality. How many know that when we go to war as a nation, in truth, in, at least in my lifetime, really what happens is our military goes to war. And pretty much the rest of us, we still have our lives. Is that true? Now maybe that wasn't true in World War I and World War II, but how many know that for at least the last 50, 60 years, when this nation goes to war, our military goes to war, but the rest of us remain civilians? Okay? Now, I want to say that in Israel, it is not that way. In Israel, every young man, and I believe now every young woman, goes through several years of military training. So if you are an adult in Israel, you are now part of their military. Do you see the difference in the mentality? Because now it's not just the nation going to war with a few people going off someplace, but it's the entire company going to war. It's the entire army, it's the entire military mobilized, the entire population mobilized to defend their land. And I, I'm challenging us today that we've got to take on a different mentality in the church. Okay, I believe that a lot of times... As believers, we say, we'll let the intercessors take care of that. Or we'll let the watchmen take care of that. Or we'll let the prophets hear from God. But I want you to understand, Ephesians 4, 11, and 12 says that God has given some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. And you guys have heard that in this church. But let's read the rest of the verse, which says, for the equipping of of the saints for the work of the ministry. So the fivefold ministry is actually geared towards equipping the saints. How many here are saints? Bishop will tell you you don't have to die and get into a stained glass window to be a saint, okay? If you're a believer, then you're a saint. And that means that all fivefold ministry should be pouring into you the equipping of the Holy Spirit so that we can be fully armed, fully ready for what's at hand. And so I'm issuing a call today to those of you here and to those of you watching online that every single one of us need to rise up and learn how to answer Jesus' call to watch and pray. Come on, Jesus didn't just say, hey, you intercessors watch and pray, or hey, you prophets watch and pray, or some of you watchmen watch and pray. Jesus was speaking to the body of Christ and saying every single one of us need to learn to watch and pray. Watching on your jobs. Come on, you, how many go to a job every day? How many used to go to a job every day, now you do your job from home? Okay. How many interact with people in a grocery store? How many interact with people uh, wherever you go? Come on, we have a responsibility to know how to watch and pray no matter where we're going. And if you turn on the news at all, which I don't always recommend these days, but if you do, you need to learn how to watch and pray as you watch the news. I believe that God is positioning us to know how to respond in this very critical time in our nation. I, I want to remind you what the Lord said to me at the beginning of January. He said, I'm up to something. Y'all should have got really excited about that, okay? How many wish that God wasn't up to anything? No, how many are glad that God's up to something, okay? <laughs> How many are glad that God is saying, I'm getting ready to do something, but you're going to have to trust me in the process, amen? This is a new level of trust. This is a new level of interaction with the Spirit of God. And I believe in that process, God's going to tune our ear and God's going to help us to come into a greater place than ever before of hearing his voice and knowing how to move forward. So I want to relate to you this, this vision that I had. It was actually a dream. Um, and, uh, 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 but first I want to talk about the fact that last August, um, when we were in our prayer room, and, and many of you have heard me share this already, but the Lord said to me, the God of peace is rising. The God of peace is rising. And I knew that that came out of Romans 16, 20, which declares, and the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. 
Come on, put your feet on the ground and say, God's crushing Satan under my feet. I wanted to put up this one, but I couldn't quite get it. But there was a little caption from the snake saying, oh man, I thought I was winning. <laughs> the God of peace will soon crush Satan. He told me, he said, the God of peace is rising. Tell the body of Christ the God of peace is rising. That was in August. How many think God knew what was getting ready to happen? The God of peace is rising. And then I thought about Isaiah chapter 6, 9 verse 6, where it says, His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of what? Peace. And of the increase of His government and peace, there shall be what? No end. Okay, it is an ever-increasing, ever-expanding kingdom that we serve in. And God says, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. So I looked at this phrase, prince of peace. And the word prince comes from a Hebrew word, sar, S-A-R. And it literally means one who wrestles, one who wars, one who governs, and one who rules. See, we need to know that this prince isn't a passive prince. He's a warring prince. He's a ruling prince. He's a, he's a fighting prince. And he's rising up to fight for us. If he's saying the God of peace is rising, I think he's saying, listen, the Prince of Peace is rising on, the, on behalf of the people of God. Now, how many understand when the God of peace shall soon crush Satan under your feet, it doesn't sound very peaceful, does it? It means that there's confrontation and there's contending. And I think it's very interesting that this word shalom um, has all these wonderful meanings, peace, tranquility, health, wealth, wholeness, prosperity, to have favor with God, to have favor with men. That's what the, the Jewish people mean when they greet each other with the word shalom. So turn to somebody and say shalom. Okay? It's, it's an amazing decree that begins to shift things. But this last year we learned that Hebrew scholars actually have studied out the word pictures that the four Hebrew letters uh, that, that comprise the word shalom, those four Hebrew letters all have a word picture, and those four, word, those four letters spell out the meaning that shalom actually means peace comes when you destroy the authority of chaos. Now turn to somebody and say shalom. Come on, it means something completely different. It means God crushing Satan underneath your feet when it comes to your family, your finances, your destiny, your calling. Come on, it, it begins to take us out of this, this passive floating peace and it, it, it catapults us into this understanding that the God of peace is rising and when he rises, he begins to put all opposition under his feet, but he is looking for us to partner with him and to decree that we are are going to see chaos crushed in this next season of time. Amen?